Uh, hello, uh, my name is uh, Sigbjörn Skåden. I'm a Sami, uh, belonging to the Sami people that have uh, our territories uh, in North Scandinavia and Northwest Russia. Uh, and right now I'm sitting on an island called Idna in the indigenous Sami language um, that is uh, by the edge of the Atlantic Sea. It is 9.30 p.m. I'm going to read three texts or poems uh, that I've written in collaboration with the indigenous poet Sam Wagen Watson. And this, uh, this um, has been written as a part of Fair Trade Poetry Month for Red Room Poetry. A reindeer herder stood on a beach and looked out to sea. It was springtime. A reindeer had come to this place to give birth. Up on the moors, snow had begun to give way to open patches of moss, an archipelago of birthplaces, and from the sea, a welcoming breeze came in, a forerunner of the season to come. As I walked by, the herder turned to me with a brooding frown and said she'd heard seagulls here that sounded like infants crying. I knew what she meant when she said it. That's the kitty wake, I said only I'd never before considered that sameness of sound, that language that precedes language. Now, in winter even, I see stills of that bird when I walk these beaches, and if sounds had stills, I'd hear them too, mirages of sound, waiting for someone to come by and hear just them. These incoations of language whose lives now flicker on the open Atlantic Sea. A scorched earth. Firstly, a decree from Governor Lachlan Macquarie orders to his troops circa 1816. All Aborigines from Sydney onwards are to be made prisoners of war. If they resist, they are to be shot and their bodies hung from trees in the most conspicuous places near where they fell. So I strike terror into the hearts of surviving Natives. Part one. I will not be moved. Long have I recognised the state of being on this country. Collaborator or captive. The drought takes too many prisoners. And those who are compliant end up living on their knees anyway. In the heat haze, barbed wire fences sing three bar blues. Twang, twangin', twang, twang. Accompanied by murders of crows in their black capes punctuating an endless blue horizon. Red dust twisters smothering everything in sight. Wind swept plains of nothing are still something. The rich ghost nation we have sewn into the fabric of our identity. This scorched earth. I will not be moved. Winter compresses branches and stems, drives sap down in the roots. At the tail of this long hibernation, villagers wade through snow into the woods to cut the trees. From the trees that are cut, a message seeps out through the bark to other trees. It says, brace yourselves. 
Tradition is that villagers don't cut adjacent trees. In among the stumps, life goes on as normal the following months. Sap rises, sprouts pop, leaves flicker in the wind. But the message from the severed trees lives on in the standing ones. Self-preservation becomes part of their identities. Below the stumps and the slowly dissolving roots, amber is meticulously being forged. Petrified distillments that remind us why we are we. Part two of three. A scorched earth. I will not be moved. Nothing else in the world smells like bushfire. Early morning, curly wings sing death into burning season. Unique perfume of burnt eucalyptus welcomes new life. Unlike cordite and the screams of murder, the screams from purges run deep. The scars, we all bleed red. Nature delivers curse. A grass will not dance until its seeds are seduced by flame. A death mark will never yield life. I will not be moved. Someone once gave this hill a name as a tool. Jopmovarre was named for the sorrels that grow here in abundance. The instruction in the name reads that Jopmovarre is less travelled pastures for the sheep that wander these hills, but that man does wisely in visiting Jopmovarre in early summer to reap the sorrels these lanterns of vitamin C after winter. But also this, those who named Jopmovarre did it not solely as an act of pragmatism, it was an act of love. It is here we meet on midsummer to celebrate the acme of the sun or as an excuse to get shit-faced. We feast on these sorrels still into the light, night, and our bonfire is bright and shiny. Part three of three. A scorched earth. I will not be moved. My memories dwell, but never dwindle in the solemn air of my late father's study. A street sign liberated like a trophy hung above his desk. Nigger Creek. As a child, I sat in his big chair, my mind bewildered by what kind of hatred could craft such a trophy. And burnt into my mind's eye the incomprehensible simplicity of how ignorance and fear can produce such terrors. The ghosts of those quiet hours are branded into my memory forever. How the abuse of language can char a place on the conscience <laughs> to stay fixated in that place as a prisoner, as a witness to this scorched earth. But I will never be moved. <laughs>